Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another casual Sundays uh, episode video. I'm not even sure how to call these. Well, that video of the week in which we have a more casual discussion. And today, I just want to update you a little bit on what I'm doing in my greenhouse. And also, I have a very important question for you guys. I need your advice. So let's start with the beginning. Uh, this week, I did a lot of work in the greenhouse. I rearranged, I moved around certain things. And as you can see, some of my shelves are pretty empty right now. And this is because, well, I'm not perfectly happy with the amount of light. If you remember this week, we moved the Oncidium Twinkles because they simply took too much to develop their flower spikes. And I'm pretty sure it is a light issue. And I've put them next to my southern slash western window and we'll see, hopefully they'll do better now. I have other Oncidiums or actually intergenerics, which can do pretty okay under lights as well. They develop normally. But ever since this thing with the twinkles, I kind of got a little, little bit frustrated that I cannot keep them on the shelves. It would have been so nice to keep them on the shelves. I have big shelves. I'd like them to be quite inclusive, but no, they cannot tolerate cattleyas, oncidiums. They can only tolerate intermediate to low light plants. And I think you might have seen the Phalaenopsis, which are living there at the moment. So in the twinkle video, if I'm not mistaken, I told you that I'm planning some panels, some um, LED panels from Amazon. Amazon, and I thought about it. It's not a cheap thing. It's quite the investment and it will not happen this year anyway. We have a lot of other priorities and it's not necessarily a priority as long as I do have space in my greenhouse or locations where I can put my orchids. I'm kind of running out of that sadly though. So my brightest location is this one. This is the southern window. I have here everybody, everybody crammed all of the higher light plants. I'm still working on that shelf. So I'm trying to use this area to its full potential. And it looks okay. I know it's a bit jungly, but I personally like it like this. However, yeah, it's jungly and I'm running out of this space and I need to do something. And while my greenhouse slash grow room, whatever you want to call this thing, because it's not a proper, proper greenhouse, as beautiful and as happy it makes me and, you know, I love it, it has a tiny, tiny flaw, its position. See, the longest side is this one and that's north and that is east and I have a wall on the east side. I would have loved to have light, but it is impossible. So all of this wall is east, this is south, and of course going back to west. I really hope you didn't get dizzy, but I really wanted to show you the entirety of my greenhouse. Now it's big, I love it, it has a problem, it's not super super bright everywhere, particularly where I have my shelves. It's not a design flaw, it's just how we managed to place it. We couldn't really place it there. I would have loved for it to be there, but uh, it wasn't possible. So the other day I got a little bit bumped because I live in a climate which is superb for orchids from the point of view of sunshine. I have 95% sunny days throughout the year. Gloomy days are a rarity here. Winters are mild and they're very bright. Yes, the day length is shorter, but it's very, very bright. And my biggest problem is light. How can this be? So I got a little bit frustrated and I started to do some changes. As you could see, I'm moving around orchids, trying to find adequate places for them. And the shelves right now, um, kind of empty, but they just hold the orchids, which I know can do okay. And by the way, the Hoyas will be moved from here. I'm working on another uh, grow space, <laughs> kind of, for the Hoyas. There's no light there, but don't worry, they're not gonna stay there. So there we go, out of my collection, these are the only orchids that can do okay in this type of light. Pretty much a shame, right? So I thought, okay, what can I do? What can I do? Because I cannot buy the light just yet. Well, I obviously need to take advantage of the thing that I have the most in this climate, which is sun. So I started a little something outside and we're just gonna go outside. I'll show you what I did and uh, I'll ask you a few things. <laughs> So there we go. I moved some of the orchids outside. I do have quite a few IKEA stands, the soccer stands, which I like, and they're just, you know, I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with them. I kind of wanted to do the gate thing I told you about, but now that I think about it, you know, maybe I can reuse them into a better setup. So I'm trying to grow my orchids outside. Uh, yes, I know my climate is extremely hot in the summertime and PS a little update on the cymbidiums. They don't look good. Um, 
I'll make an update on them. Remember two and a half months ago when I quit smoking? Yeah, I was frustrated, anxious, and just not myself for an entire month until the withdrawal process was over and I just neglected everything on the terrace and Sally, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about it in a different video. So I'm thinking, okay, right now this is a very sunny location which is not being used. At the moment, it is autumn here. It is still very warm. It's like 28, 29 degrees in the daytime. In the nighttime, it goes to 18, 17, maybe 16. And it's gonna be like this for quite a while. Now, my climate is a uh, subtropical Mediterranean climate. And from what I understand from your comments, it's very similar to a Florida climate. I'm not gonna say it's identical. I don't think it's identical, but it is similar, kinda, as far as I know. So I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna grow these orchids outside, but obviously in the winter, I might have some issues because even though it doesn't freeze here, it goes kinda low. In the summertime, yet again, I'm gonna have some issues because temperatures here reach 40 degrees Celsius. So um, in the summertime, I think I can resolve it. I'm gonna put here orchids that can actually withstand those type of temperatures. And I'm thinking to put shading cloth here, which I've never used, but I know many of you use on your greenhouses. Pretty much all I wanna do is just cut the power of the sun. I constantly have air movement here. I live on an island, it's always windy, so that's not the problem. Air movement is not the problem. My problem is sunshine combined with high temperatures. So if I can cut the direct sunshine, I should theoretically be good with some orchids here outside. So in the summertime, I'm thinking, yeah, I can fix it. I can put shading cloth all over this area. Now in the winter time, I'm not entirely sure what to do. I'm well aware of the fact that some orchids cannot withstand lower temperatures, let's say 10 degrees Celsius, maybe maybe a little lower than that, but I know some uh, can withstand it. And here's my question. For those of you who are growing orchids outside, maybe in the Florida area, how do you deal with the orchids? Do you bring them inside in the winter time? Do you have a schedule when they are outside and when they come in? Or do you keep them outside all the time and how? I really need some advice right now because honestly, I'm not entirely sure if I can um, fix the lighting situation in my greenhouse very soon. I, I really don't know. <laughs> so I have all the sun at my disposal. I, I'm not complaining. I just want to do things right. And I'm not very good at growing orchids outside. So I would really appreciate some input from you guys. And what orchids can withstand those types of temperatures. You can use Fahrenheit. I'll just uh, convert them. I cannot do the conversion in my mind, but don't worry, the internet will help me. So yeah, a few details of the sorts. Just um, help me out a little bit because yeah, I do want to grow some orchids outside. It's the space that I have and I cannot utilize right now because I most probably don't have the knowledge. I have no idea how, but I'm thinking about it. So yeah, um, I want to try it out and your input would help me a lot. Right now I put some orchids here that are, eh, well, it's not like I don't have anything to lose with them, but it's not like they're necessarily the most expensive and so on and so forth. There are orchids that I know can tolerate some pretty high light and I know they will not get sunburned because the wind is pretty chilly and even though the temperatures, and that's Milo, I think you can hear him. So even though the temperatures are not necessarily low, uh, the sun will not burn. Right now it's kind of hazy outside. I'm not entirely sure if these are clouds or humidity. So no worries, they will not get burned right now, but it's uh, almost the middle of October. <laughs> In September, they would get burned. But right now, pretty much things are okay. Alrighty, so that's the kind of next project that I'm thinking about. Other than that, I've kind of, I think I've kind of optimized at least this growing area to its full potential. I have Vandas on this side and upwards. I have Catbeas and uh, Dendrobium phalaenopsis and Highlight Orchids here. This shelf could uh, hold more orchids and I'm working on it. I didn't clean it just yet. <laughs> you can see it's still dusty, but I'm working on it. So I can place a few more highlight orchids in this area, but pretty much I kind of optimized the space. I can work a little bit more here. This is a tricky shelf because it's kind of bright, but not in the morning time. The shelf above it is tricky as well because it is actually receiving direct sunshine right now, but not early in the morning. So these shelves and the opposite ones, they kind of need some improvement, but um, at least this area is, I believe, improved to the maximum. I can still hold a few more Vandas if you can't believe it, <laughs> but uh, no, a little break from the Vandas. I counted, I have 20, 
one yeah 21 vendas not including the seedlings so oh boy <laughs> hopefully they're gonna bloom i have the two pacharas actually uh, producing flower spikes now but hey they're pacharas there's a reason why i always recommend pacharas and this is because they bloom a lot so there we go uh, but yeah i want some um some sandariana blooms but they're kind of recent can you believe it guys up until a few months ago i had four vandas or something of the sorts in uh, in the past few months 31 uh, no 21 so yeah talk about evolution well i have to be honest if i didn't have discovered the uh, microfiber thing no i wouldn't have bought so many vandas absolutely not it's a hassle to water them in the buckets so often but with the microfiber i don't even need to water them every day so I'm happy with that alrighty another thing that I wanted to run by you guys there were quite a few of you guys who suggested I do a live event at some point and I really wanted to uh, problem is I do not show my face and a live event would be like this and just me talking behind the camera it's a little bit different it's different when you make a video than when you do a live event so you know I don't think it's gonna be all that fun I think it's just gonna be boring However, some other quite a few of you wanted a sort of Q&A video. I've never actually done a proper general Q&A type of video. I did Q&A regarding orchids and I did um, videos inspired from your questions, but I never did a general Q&A for Miss Orchid Girl. So I thought, yeah, sure. The end of the month is approaching actually. So yeah, special times. I was thinking, okay, let, let's make a sort of event. I've never actually done this, but if you're interested and would be curious for next casual Sunday to do a general Q&A, yeah, ask me anything you want down below and I'll answer you in a video next Sunday. As long as it's not very personal, you know, you can ask me pretty much anything. So alrighty guys, uh, this is enough for Sunday, this Sunday. I'm slightly tired, I've been working in the greenhouse since 5, uh, but I'm proud, I did a lot of things, so I don't know, I'm really on the fence with growing orchids outside. So let me know your tips, your advice and everything you can share with me about growing orchids outside and what climates can actually tolerate what orchids. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. You know the drill, if you've enjoyed our little time together, give this video a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye. Okay, let me show you something fun. So this is the pot of a dendrobium nobili. You don't know it, it's a yellow nobili that I got from Ana Maria this year, earlier this year. Not sure if I ever showed it, but anyway, um, look at the pot. Do you see those white stripes? Do you know what those are? Those are roots. <laughs> so even if I don't have transparent pots, I told you they're slightly translucent, I can actually see the roots growing, at least in these pots, which I prefer. They're just very rare. I have a funny suspicion he wants to grow another cane, which, no, please don't. Just uh, go into blooming mode. Right now he's still getting water because he's getting dehydrated, but no more fertilizer. So hopefully uh, this little nubbin will wait until spring. That's the problem with my uh, nobilies. They take quite a while to acclimate to this environment. My other nobilies, uh, they got acclimated. They're okay now. But this little guy, he has no idea what's going on.